Hi everyone, this is Teo from Prakablocks.com. Today I'm going to review the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. I just found out that my friend actually has a unit, so I managed to borrow one from him to bring you this review. So this is the 13-inch Mobile Studio Pro. Let's talk about the things that are included in the box first. So we have the tablet, we have the new stylus. This is the pen case that's included. It's almost cylindrical in shape. The build quality is fantastic. This is almost all metal. And right at the bottom, there are two extrusions here. So you can put it on the table without it rolling off. Let me open this to let you see what's inside. So this is the Wacom Pro Pen 2. Let me just open it fully, slide this out. Right here is the nib remover. This case comes with several replacement nips and they are just right behind this cover. These are the rings, color rings for this part here. So if you want to change the color, you can have up to four options. And these are the replacement nips. This is the new Wacom Stylus. It supports up to 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and it supports tilt sensitivity as well. The build quality is very good, it's very solid. There is a big rubber grip here, all the way from this end to this end. Two shortcut buttons on the side. And right at the back, there's the eraser. And this style is just like other stylus from the Wacom Synthetic or Intuos line, it doesn't require any battery to work. This is the pen holder that's included that you can attach to the side of the tablet. You can easily attach the pen holder to the side by putting it into this hole like this and turning it. And now you can put the pen here However, it blocks the USB ports here by the side. If you want to, you can put the pen vertically in the pen holder as well. I will be very careful about this small part here because if this breaks off inside the hole here, there is probably no way to get it out. And this is the power brick and USB-C charging cable. The build quality of this tablet is very solid. This is the 13 inch model and it weighs 1.4 kg. Right at the back we have this rubber feet. It is actually very hard so it's not really soft rubber. Let's take a look at the ports and buttons on this side. We have the volume button. This is the toggle switch for locking the orientation. This is the power switch, this is the 3.5mm audio jack, and this is the micro SD card slot. On the other side, we have three USB Type 3 ports. You can use any one for charging. If you want to connect to an external monitor, you can do so as well through this, but you need a Wacom Link adapter. And this hole here is for putting the included pen holder. And if you want to use this as a normal synthetic, you can do so using the Wacom Link adapter as well. These are the express keys on the left side. There are three buttons at the top, three at the bottom, and this is the rocker key. And there are actually four buttons on the scrolling wheel here and one button right in the middle. So you can change uh, the buttons to whatever functions you want. The model with 512 gigs of storage comes with a fingerprint sensor that is right in the middle of this touch ring. The buttons on the side have a very firm and tactile feel to them. They are very nice to press. If you are a left-handed user, you can turn this tablet around and let this rotate. So now the buttons are on the right side. This 13.3 inch screen supports a resolution of 2560 by 1440 so there is a lot of resolution on this screen. You might notice that this screen 
it's not glossy so it's matte let me put my glossy phone on the screen just to let you see the difference so this screen is very nice it doesn't reflect light even though right now I'm in a studio with lots of lights above me this is the this is the screen that I'm looking at no reflections at all this screen supports up to 96% ODB RGB so the color reproduction is very good although you probably need color calibration to get the most out of this on the back there are 3D cameras this for this particular model it comes with 3D cameras but uh, this is additional cost so if you do not need this you can get the cheaper model so the tablets they start from Intel i5 to i7 you can get 4 gigs of RAM up to 16 gigs of RAM the storage that it supports is from 64 gigs to 512 and if you need extra storage you can use the SD card slot on the side but I would definitely recommend you get at least 8 gigs of RAM there are actually built-in fans to cool down the unit so these are the ventilation holes here and hidden behind this feet here Right now the fans are on but I cannot hear anything so they are almost silent. The graphics card for this model is an Intel Iris Graphics 550 but if you want to do more intensive 3D work then it's better to get the larger model, the 15.6 inch model which has an Nvidia Quadro M600M with 2 gigs of memory. And you have the option of going for the M1000M as well with 4 gigs of memory. Let's take a look at what other things that you can customize with this Wacom tablet properties settings. You can customize the pressure sensitivity curve. You can customize the two shortcut buttons on the side of the stylus to any keyboard shortcuts that you want to. You can change the eraser function, the button on the back. You can also calibrate the shortcut buttons on the side. So you can customize it to any specific keyboard shortcut that you want to. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro also supports touch gestures, like finger gestures. So if you want to, you can customize those as well. These are the default settings. I think they work well. Right now I'm using Photoshop CC. Let me show you the size of these buttons and menus. Even though this screen is small and it supports a high resolution, the buttons here, the menus here, they are still quite big. That's because Adobe CC, they have updated the interface to support high resolution screens like this. So this is very nice and they are very easy to click because they are very big. Let me show you some strokes from the new Wacom Stylus. This is the new Stylus that supports up to 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. So this is very sensitive. Let me try and zoom in. This is Adobe CC, so it supports finger gestures. This tablet is very responsive. The lines, they taper very smoothly. Let me try to draw something very slowly. With tablets like the Surface Pro 4 or the Lenovo Mix 510, when drawing diagonal lines, they have some sort of wobble, but not so with this Mobile Studio Pro. So this is the main advantage that this tablet has over other tablets. That's the accuracy. This is very accurate. When you set it up the first time, you might have to calibrate the screen to remove the parallax error. That would make your strokes even more accurate. So right now I can draw these diagonal lines very slowly and there is no jitter at all.
this is no different compared to working with Wacom Intools or other uh, Wacom tablets. This is Medibank Paint Pro. Sometimes when you want the accuracy, you want to draw a bit slower. I think with other tablets you might have a problem, but with the Mobile Studio Pro, you can work at whatever speed you like. So this is the thing that I really like about this product. And for this particular app, it supports finger gestures as well, so you can rotate it and you can zoom in and zoom out. It's very easy, very responsive. But all these features, it really depends on uh, the apps that you are using. For example, if you are using apps that do not support finger gestures, then you will not be able to use the touch features. Hovering distance is around 1 cm and when the stylus is near the screen, it goes into palm rejection mode and palm rejection works almost flawlessly. One important accessory to get is of course the keyboard because this tablet it doesn't come with any keyboard. Wacom, they have their own version. The one that I have here is the Logitech Bluetooth keyboard. We are almost at the end of this review, so let me do a quick recap on the pros and cons of this tablet. The build quality is excellent. This is very portable as you can probably tell. This 13.3 inch model weighs 1.4 kg. If you want to get the 15.6 inch version for the larger screen for more resolution, that's going to be over 2 kg. So I think this is good size to work on if you need that portability. I like the matte surface. There's no reflection on it and this surface is very nice to draw on. There's a very tactile feel when you are using the stylus on this surface. The resolution of this is 2560 by 1440. I would consider this to be high resolution for a 13 inch screen like this. Now everything appears sharp, however, it depends on the app or the software that you are using. For example, if you are using older software like Adobe CS6 or older, then the user interface is not updated for high-res screens like this. The buttons, the user menu, they are going to be tiny and that's going to be very frustrating to use and that's probably going to force you to upgrade to newer software. The USB 3 ports by the side are very useful. If you want to connect this to an external monitor, you can do so, but you need the Wacom Link adapter, which you have to buy separately. If you want to use this as a normal Synthic, like a normal tablet that you connect to a computer, for example, if you're using Mac OS at home, you can use this as a tablet as well. You just need to connect it through the Wacom Link adapter to this tablet, and you can use Mac OS on this. You can use it like a normal Synthic or a normal tablet. All right, let's talk about the downsides. I feel that the screen can be brighter. The brightness is 250 CDM2, and this is at 100%. So right now, as I'm looking at it, I think it's very satisfactory, but if I want to save battery power, if I turn this to 50%, which I'm going to do right now, it's going to look a bit darker. If you are using this in a in an environment that is darker, where there's not a lot of light, then I think this is satisfactory, but this is something to take note of. The battery life is four hours if you use this continuously. Of course, the battery life is going to depend on what apps you are using with this tablet. So if you are using processor intensive apps, for example, if you are rendering videos, then the battery life is going to be a bit shorter. And the last thing I want to talk about is the price. This is definitely more expensive compared to the Surface Pro 4. Now the selling point of this tablet really is the accuracy of the pen, the Wacom technology that is behind. Now when you compare this to Surface Pro 4, when you're drawing lines on this, especially diagonal lines or drawing very softly using very little pressure, the pen gets it right. So you do not get any wobbly jitter lines when you're drawing slowly, diagonally. The lines, they come out just the way you want them to. The pressure sensitivity works perfectly. There is tilt sensitivity as well. Pump rejection is perfect too. So I think when it comes to accuracy, if you are someone who needs accuracy, if you are someone who needs to draw a bit slower, then this is the product to check out. And right now, I don't think there are any tablets that matches this 
uh, Mobile Studio Pro in terms of that accuracy. And overall performance on this tablet is generally very responsive. This unit uses an Intel i7. You can probably get an Intel i5, but get at least eight gigs of RAM. And that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If I have any updates to this review, I will put them in my text review. The link will be in the video description just right below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.